was really good fam this is gonna be a real quick hitter see we've got a next vid in the oven and it's turned out to be a big one so it's taking a while and we figured it may be helpful to catch up on some things that you may have missed in the meantime you're watching Sekidur, and this is some noteworthy info at the end of march 2021 it's important to remember that this channel is for educational purposes only and isn't meant to replace any legal or financial advice from a paid professional also, we'd appreciate it if you could like and subscribe as it'll let us know that there's an actual audience of more than just bots out there in the world. From the heart, we truly appreciate everybody that stuck with us this far, and with that, let's get to it. Alright, so maybe one of the most important developments for a lot of investors out there is the postponement of Korean Air and Asiana's merger to 2024. The news of their merger dropped back last year and the original aim was to fully absorb Asiana by the end of Q2 this year, but the company is still facing corporate combination reviews in 9 countries, and that may mean that the acquisition will take a lot longer than had been initially hoped. In fact, if you are investing in these companies, it may be in your best interest to push off any hopes of an entire merger until the end of 2022. In any case, instead of just naturally absorbing the firm as Korean Air had initially planned, they've actually changed their plans and they now intend to launch a new integrated airline in 2024. In this case, Asiana and Korean Air would fly under one name as a subsidiary of their holdings company Hanjin Kal. Now in this case, Asiana subsidiaries such as Air Busan would remain their subsidiaries and it would make this whole thing look like a Russian doll type structure of airlines. Now while this merger is still expected to happen at this juncture, investors who'd bought on mass during the most recent stock offering last month will likely be unhappy with this turn of events, as it inevitably pushes any potential new cash flows much further into the future than had been initially hoped. Alright, next on the list is NCSoft's falling stock price. After hitting a high of 1 million won plus at the beginning of February, their stock has tumbled down to the mid-800 range on account of the disappointing debut of Lineage 2 and the pushing back of the debut date of the new cross-platform adventure game that they've planned, Trickster M. The former seems to be struggling with classic late-stage MMORPG waning of interest, but the latter is being more highly anticipated than initially expected, so that's a good sign that there may still be a light at the end of the tunnel for the gaming giant. Oh, also, I think they have another game coming out called Blade and Soul 2, but I'm not entirely sure, so you may want to check up on that. But if I remember correctly, that game is supposed to be another hit, so keep an eye out on that. Alright, finally, there's a large number of firms that are at risk of delisting due to failure to obtain an unqualified audit opinion in their full year audit reports. This is a bunch of words that you may not understand, so it essentially means that they failed to submit a legally recognized audit report that recognizes all of the necessary information in accordance with KIFRS guidelines for the financial year of 2022. It basically means that they failed their audit and they are no longer allowed to stay on the Korean exchange. Now, these companies include 7 from the KOSPI as well as another 32 from the KOSDAQ. And this number may grow as companies continue to submit their reports for last year, but at the end of the day, it's really just a good reminder that it's important to know what you're investing in before putting money into the company. A distressed company is only a good investment if you trust them to take care of their business and turn it around. Things like delisting can mean a permanent loss of capital for you, which is at the end of the day, the absolute worst thing that can happen to the money that you invest. Alright, that's it for me. I told you it was going to be quick, so we stayed quick quick. Stay tuned this week because what we're actually planning on releasing is a very deep dive on one of the most volatile stocks of the past month, but one that we've talked about before and we kind of like here. If you haven't guessed already, what we're talking about is HMM. Until then, take it easy.